up before. Awesome, that was a really good response. Keep your hand in the air if that part it was this part. All right, a couple people, that's still a good response. I want to thank you guys for visiting and supporting your Florida State Parks, whether it's by visiting and supporting our beautiful Florida State Park or one of the other 174 beautiful Florida State Parks, trails, and preserves that we have to offer for your enjoyment and your outdoor recreation. How many of you are not from Florida? All right, well, thank you guys for visiting our beautiful state. Our park's a mile and a quarter in length. If you walk it one or two times, you're walking one, two plus, give or take, miles in some cases. Drink lots and lots of water. You can get dehydrated whether it's 30 degrees out or whether it's 90 degrees out. So drink lots of water and take many breaks along the way. So you guys came here this morning for this program to hear about manatees. So below me in this pool, we have three manatees. Are they all in here? I see two, but we do have three. So she's probably on the other side munching still. So these manatees are resident manatees, which means these girls live here <coughs> year round and they will live with us um, for the remainder of their lives. How many of you have visited during the summer? All right, so you guys probably saw them in the other spring on the other side of the park. November through March in Florida is the winter manatee season. It's manatee season because it's when our air temperatures start getting below 70 and pretty much, with the exception of a few days, staying there. In the summer, our Gulf of Mexico waters are in the high 80s and 90s sometimes. During winter, the Gulf of Mexico, where the manatees mainly stay, those water temperatures get pretty low. They get into the low 60s and high 50s as well. Manatees need water above 68 degrees for prolonged periods of time in order to survive or else they get hypothermia. Spring water is 72 degrees year round. So in November, we bring our manatees to this side of the park. They have this pool. And don't let it discourage you, they do not only have this pool from November through March. Underneath the boardwalk, right across from me, is a little channel that goes underwater out into two more paddock fenced-in areas in the spring. So they actually have a lot more space out there as well. They just choose to be in here right now because we're feeding. So our girls are secured on this side of the park. Why do we do that? We do that because we open up our gates and we allow the wild manatees to have access to our warm spring, that 72 degree spring water from November through March. They come in in the evenings when the air temperatures get into the 40s and 50s. They stay throughout the night in that nice warm water. And then in the morning when the air temperatures rise, they go down river and feed because there's not much food out there for them and we do not feed them because they are wild and we do want them to continue to stay wild. So they go down river feed, and then when the air temperatures drop again in the evening, they come back in. And that cycle revolves, like I said, body weight every single day. Our manatees range in weight between 1,900, and wait for it, 2,800 pounds. So a 2,800 pound manatee is gonna eat 280 pounds of food every single day. We do not feed our manatees that much food. First and foremost, they're a little fluffy. An average wild manatee weighs 1,000, 1,200, 1,500 pounds. Our manatees are not swimming the miles every day that a wild manatee swims. They do not need 10% of their body weight. They get, between the three girls, about 300 pounds of food a day. They get romaine lettuce or cabbage, and they also get a coastal hay as well. The coastal hay helps aid in digestion, and it's very fibrous, kind of like us eating our morning bowl of Wheaties. It's very, very good for them. They have no natural predators. Their predators are cold water stress and unfortunately humans, us and our boat. Boat stripes are unfortunately very detrimental to the manatees. You can see our girls um, have old boat strike injuries. There's one right underneath me that's just been a little deep in a part of 
see her now, but she does have some old, peeled propeller marks from a previous injury um, years ago when she was wild. Anyone know what their closest living relative is? Yeah, an elephant, exactly. So I have a really bad comparison because not everyone has seen an elephant. But if you watch the manatee eat, they eat much like an elephant eats with its trunk. They have prehensile lips. So they roll those lips out, grab their lettuce, and roll it back in with their lips. Also, on their flippers, they have toenails, just like an elephant does on their feet. Some volunteers that are going to feed the manatees. I'll hang around, answer any questions one-on-one -on -one that you guys may have. <laughs> Feel free to take as many pictures as you would like of the manatees. Your next program will be a 1230 hippo program. You guys will learn about the hippo and he'll get fed if he wants to eat. We'll have a 130 manatee, a 230 wildlife encounter, and another 330 manatee program to wrap your day up with. Last boat leaves at 3.30. <laughs> that's what it's supposed to say, move. On behalf of the entire state of Florida, all the animals here in our park and our